We had been married for only two good short years. Beth, my wife, was a little wary of me when we first met. She had heard things about me she did not like. Sorry, my name is Tom. When we dated, she found out most things were untrue. I was the jealous type. Beth is a stunner is the best way to describe her. When we were dating, we went out dancing quite a lot. In clubs and dance halls, Beth had plenty of admirers. All my friends wanted to dance with her and lots of other guys. Many times when she danced with guys I did not know. He and I would disappear. I was not there for a chat. I would tell them back off or else. Most of them would come back for another dance with Beth. I watched them on the floor. They all made the same moves on her. I was glad that we went to six different places to dance. Anyhow, I would give them a second warning and there would not be a third. This good-looking lad asked Beth for a dance he tried it on with her. When she came back to me, she knew I was angry with him. I tapped him on the shoulder and asked him to come outside. When we got outside, he ended up with a broken dot, dot, dot all over his white shirt. I would go back to Beth for a dance. Another two I did not know asked Beth for a dance. Both tried it on. I told them to back off or else. These two guys came back for more dances with Beth. The first one of the two had sat down. Don't come back, I said. The other one had Beth on the dance floor. As soon as the dance had finished and Beth was well away from us, don't come back, I said. Both of them asked Beth for a dance, and both ended up with blood all down their white shirts. Beth noticed two of them with blood all down their shirts. She looked at me, and she knew I had done it to them. Yes, even before we were married, Beth had realized I had a jealous streak. When we were dating, we broke up a couple of times only for a week. Yes, all because of my jealousy, and we both were glad we got back together quickly. Yes, when any guy tried it on with Beth, they were told back of her else. I had lost count before we were married how many times I went outside with them. Yes, I was the jealous type, and Beth knew it only too well. Anyhow, Beth was prepared to put up with my possessiveness and jealousy. She had fallen in love with me and I with her. We dated for 18 months before we were married. One person was not at the wedding of my brother. He had never met Beth. Beth backed off from dancing with guys I did not know. She did not want me to get hurt. She was hoping my jealousy would just go away. I must say, it did. Update. In the two good years of married life, I had my jealousy under control. We still went out dancing, and my friends danced with Beth. All three of them knew I was so lucky in marrying Beth. Beth would still dance with strangers, but only once. She knew I might get angry with them. Beth knew I was so deeply in love with her and would do anything, so nothing came between us. We would go to her and my friends' houses for parties and then to our house. Beth would give my friends a good kiss, and I would do the same to their wives. It was just a friendship kiss, nothing else. Beth changed her job three times in the last year and was happy in her present job. I had a job that was taking me away from home. They were short trips. I worked on cargo ships like my brother. Beth would go out with her friends two or three times a week. When she came home, our sex was high. Sometimes she comes home. She had a headache because of the loud music, but the following night, we were back to normal. She was able to work at home now, but those days when she was not out with the girls, then our sex started to drop off. Our sex life now was non-existent. She dressed to show off her body for me and other men. My jealousy was back, and I knew she was seeing someone. I had to find out. The ship I served on was having a refit so I was able to watch her coming out of work and when she was at home. She came out of work with the same man he was always ten steps behind her. They went to the same hotel and it was always a short section after work. I followed him home. When she was at home, he turned up and that was for hours on end. My jealousy was becoming out of control, but if she was cheating on me, they both would pay for it. I spoke with the manager of the hotel, telling him of what I thought my wife was up to, and I asked for a recording of them to be done. He told me they had a room set up for that type of request. I gave him a picture of Beth, and it was put behind the desk for the next time they came in.
the staff was told when she came in, they had to use room 101. When Beth went to work, I set up a recording system in the bedroom. That week, I was ready to kick her and him. My jealousy was going sky high. I started to plan something out. I was having drips and drabs of sex with her, but not like before. My ship will be ready for its next trip in nine days' time. My brother was home tonight. His ship was in for maintenance for weeks. I met him and asked him if he would do me a favor. I told him that Beth was cheating on me and I wanted revenge. I asked him if he would do my monthly trip in nine days' time. What's in it for me, he said. Since we are brothers, you can go and live in my house and screw her, I said. But she will know it's not you, he said. No, she won't. Deal, he said. On Friday night, we will change places. I have a week to get it all sorted out. You just screw her, I said. Beth knew I was on my month's trip in a week's time. I had to find out what might be going on. I had found out his name, so I telephoned him, asking for him, but he was with Beth screwing her. I told them I was his brother and would be in town next week. The girl told me sorry he will not be here next week. He is on holiday for a month. I thanked her, waited about ten minutes, and rang back. A different girl answered. I told her that I was Beth's brother and would be in town next week. I wanted to see her. It worked like a charm. The girl told me Beth was off for a month's holiday. So while I was going to be away for a month on the seas, they would be screwing all day. I called a friend of mine, and he was having trouble going to the loo. He had been given oral bowel cleansing solutions for months on end. I asked him what they did, and he told me, if you take them that day, the following day you will be empty once you have been to the loo. Me, if you take them that day. The following day, you will be empty once you have been to the loo. He showed them to me. So, I asked him if he got any to spare. He gave me three. He told me he didn't use them all the time because it makes him weak. My brother was having a good time screwing my wife. Friday, we met in the pub. Brother, she is one good screw and she went wild twice, he said. Thanks for that. I owe you one, I said. On Thursday, I poured oral bowel cleansing in his kettle. On the Friday before I went home, I had done the same to him. On Thursday night in our kettle was the cleaning fluid, just for Beth. I was in his house and in his kettle, I poured oral bowel cleansing fluid. My brother replaced me on my ship. Beth was out the door like a shot on her way to his house. That was what I was hoping for. I waited a good thirty minutes and let myself into his house. I walked in the bedroom with my German Luger in one hand and on the other hand, a whole doll with two sets of rented bondage straps, having a good time waving my Luger at him. Beth calls out that he made me do it. I love you. I glared at her. Bass stays where you are waving my Luger at him, dropping the whole doll on the bed, unzipped it and emptied the straps on the bed. Wife put the straps on his wrists and ankles and tied them to the bed. Now put the other four on yours. Tie your ankles first, she did as told. Then I tied the wrist straps to the bed. I went to the bottom of the bed and it looked like a good sight. They looked at each other. He said, what are you going to do? Well, that's easy to answer, I said. Since you have asked, you two have booked a month of work and we're going to be screwing for a month while I was away, I said. How do you know that? He said, I made two phone calls and was told by two girls. We are going to be together for 30 long days and nights, I said. You cannot leave us like this, he said. I just laughed. What if we need the loo? He said. You have been on the loo for two days and her for one day. I don't think we have to worry about that, I said. But we need to drink, he said. No, you don't. And if you don't shut up, I will gig you, I said. I brought into the bedroom a TV and a recording player. Set it up so they both could see the TV. I went to the hotel to record. Watch this for a bit, I said. Walking round his house, I turned off all his radiators and turned up the heat on his boiler. I went into his garage and there was a van. My plan had changed. When they asked for a drink... I gave them one of those wet pads to wet their mouths. They said, can we have something to eat? No. We are going to wet the bed. Can we go to the loo? They said, no, wet the bed. 
I found an electric heater, so I plugged it in the bedroom and to wet the bed. Can we go to the loo? They said. No, wet the bed. I found an electric heater, so I plugged it in the bedroom and turned up the heat. Please, can you turn down the heat? They said. No. As one recording fished in went a new one. They were sweating. I did not care. Update one. Over the weeks I used his van, everything he owned went. Oh, the tip. The house was bare except for the bed they were both on and the TV and recorder in the bedroom and a chair. Time was running out and both of them were drained. My brother was home on Saturday. The last thing to do. I untied Beth, carried her to the van and went to the A&E with her. Then I carried her to the hospital and laid her down. I told them she was sick. They wanted details of me. I told them I had to go and get my kid. I will be back soon. They wanted details of me. I told them I had to go and get my kid. I will be back soon. Jumped in the van and drove away. I went back to his place, untied him, and dragged him to the van. I drove to the other side of town with him pulled up outside, and Ian pushed the bast out. I went back to his place, loaded the van with the bed, and removed the TV and stuff. Driving it to spare ground, I set the van on fire, like I did with his car two weeks before. I walked back to his place and checked everywhere, off to the docks and picked up my brother. He was going away for two long weeks in the sun. I paid for it. The following day, I reported my wife was missing. The next day, a knock at the door was the police. Thank God you found my wife, I said. Sir, may we come in, they said. They wanted to question me, and I knew why. Sir, we have spoken with your wife. They said, good, where is she? I want to go to her right now. I said, sir, where have you been for the last month? They said, well, since you have spoken with my wife, she would have to you. I was on a ship for the last month. Sir, that is not what your wife has said to us. They said, but she knows which ship I was on. She has told us you have been trying to dot her they said. How could I have tried to dot her? Sir, she has told us you have had her strapped to a bed for a month, they said. Officer, I have been at sea for the last month. You need to check with the ship, I said. Sir, what is the name of the ship? Where is it at anchor and the captain's name, they said. I gave my shipmates names, captain's name, ship's name, and which dock it was on. Can I go and see my wife, I said. Sir, don't go and see her until we tell you, they said. The following day, they were knocking on the door. Sir, we have been informed that you tried to dot a man last month, they said. Officer, I have been at sea for the last month. I told you that yesterday, I said. Officer, have you spoken to the captain and my shipmates yet, I said. Sir, told you that yesterday, I said. Officer. Have you spoken to the captain and my shipmates yet? I said. Sir, we have done that, they said. In that case, how can I have tried to dot my wife and this man and who is he? I said. I was shouting at them, showing anger. Officer, when can I see my wife? I want to ask her what she is up to, I said. And what has this man been saying to you about me? Who is he and what's his name? Hang in a minute. What this man got to do with my wife? I said, sir, you had best sit down, they said. Why should I sit down what's going on, I said. In the last few days, you have told me, my wife says I am trying to dot her and now a man. I would like to know this man's name, I said. Officer, what's going on, I said. Sir, we might as well tell you your wife and this man were having an affair, they said. I fell back in my chair and screamed at them. Officer, you are telling me my wife was cheating on me with this man? Yes, sir. The two-timing lying bish, I said. Officer, have you checked out if I was on the ship, yes or no, I said. Sir, it has been confirmed you were on the ship for that month, they said. In that case, where is my wife? I want to see her right now, I said. Sir, we don't think the ship for that month, they said. In that case... Where is my wife? I want to see her right now, I said. Sir, 
We don't think that is a good idea, they said. Where is she? I want to see her right away, I said. They had no choice but to let me see my wife. They told me where she was. I was out of the door before them, up to the room in the hospital. The doctor and the nurse told me she was not strong enough to see me. I pushed them out of the way and went into the room. There was her mother in the room. I just looked at her, then I looked at Beth. No, I did not look at her. I glared. Right, Beth. What's this you told the police? I tried to dock you. And who the man you are having an affair with, I said. She burst into tears. Her mother then was saying to Beth, You are having an affair. Beth nodded to her mother. Her mother stood up and walked out the door saying, You are no daughter an affair. Beth nodded to her mother. Her mother stood up and walked out the door saying, You are no daughter of mine. The tears poured down her face. I was as cold as ice. Beth, who he is, you can have him. I will be seeing my lawyer tomorrow. We are getting divorced as soon as possible, I said. Final update. Late the following day, papers for the divorce were served on Beth in the hospital. Over the next week, Beth wanted to try and explain. There was no chance that it was too late. She cheated on me and was found out. She thought it was because the police had told me, but it was not so. He was out of the hospital and went to his house. He was in for a shock. His car was not there. The house was empty. He looked in the garage. It was empty. He had nothing, just the clothes he stood up in. He sent it to the police and told them I'd removed his stuff. The police were back at my house and we went over it all again. Two weeks later, she was out of the hospital and she wanted to come home. Yes, I let her in the house. We slept in separate rooms. The divorce was going along nicely. She came out of her bedroom dressed up. Where are you going? Out with the girls. So we are back on that old tale. So what? Where are you going? Out with the girls. So we are back on that old tale. So what's the girl's name? She did not answer. In that case, go and pack. I want you out tonight, but I have nowhere to stay. Yes, you have with the girls. I do feel sorry for him. I am going out with the girls. So, who are they and I will phony them. She turned around and got changed. Then she came to where I was sitting. We did not speak for a while. Go and get ready and go and see the best. I might as well tell you, it's all over with him. So, you have found someone else to screw you. Her head fell down and started to cry. Will you let me speak without you getting upset? Go ahead, then I am nothing else. I know you won't believe, but he tricked me into having sex with him, but I still love you. I was only passing. Sex with him, please believe me. Passing sex, three months of passing sex, who, kidding who? Beth, I am sick of you. I want you out. Live your own life, but not with me. Can I live here until I find somewhere to live? I could not let her go with nowhere to live. I was a soft touch for her. At last, the divorce came through and she moved out. A couple of years had passed and I was out with my brother having a meal with two girls and in walked Beth with a man. They sat down and Beth saw me. She came over, but she had not noticed my twin brother. He turns around and Beth's mouth drops wide open. She was not sure which one of us was her ex. Beth. It is me, you I am your ex, you basked. The police did not tell you I was having an affair you knew before, didn't you? Beth, you know that last week before I had you and him strapped to the bed. At that moment, the girls stood up and left. Well, it was my brother who screwed you, and he said you was wild in bed. You bast you knew all along. Cheers to you and go and screw him over there. Beth looked at my brother. He raises his glass saying, cheers and screw him over there. Beth looked at my brother. He raises his glass saying, cheers. Tom, can I say a few words to your ex? Please do. My brother turned to Beth. That last night you were wild and on fire. My brother said to her, this is what you said, that was great. I want it every night from now on. Beth looked at him and dot him across the face and stormed off saying, Bastess. I was in a pub one night, and then walked the bast from two years before. He had on his arm a striking woman. 
He was at the bar trying to get served. I went over to the woman saying, if you are married, he will screw you and then dump you. How do you know that? She said to me. That bast broke up my marriage. He will do the same to you. She looked at me. Then she said, he has not screwed me, and I am not married. Will you take me home? I took her home that night, and it lasted in years of wedlock. Thanks to everyone who took the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share your thoughts on the events in the comments below. Take care.